Hey everybody and welcome to another Daz Studio quick tip video and in this one we're going to talk about a very nifty little trick that I use to dramatically speed up a good portion of the renders that I do. Now full disclosure this isn't going to work with every single render that you do but it will work in a very specific set of circumstances one that I personally tend to use quite a bit. So here we are in a scene and as you can see it's an enclosed room with a reflective surface for water, one character sitting in a chair and as you can see I've got cameras dotted around the room that I have used for taking uh, renders from around the room. During a conversation a lot of the shots are going to be taken from these camera angles, close-ups of the character's face and probably taken from various different angles but all close-ups. We can speed that up because having a, even using HDR lighting in this scene the light has to bounce around the room and that causes things to go quite slowly. In fact render times in this scene as it stands are looking at between two and four hours for anything reasonable and that's just not good enough for me I need to be able to churn out images much more quickly than that the character isn't going to be interacting with the environment the only thing she's going to be touching is this chair that she's sitting in everything else is just there for decorational purposes for the case in hand so what we're going to do is we're going to hide her and we're going to close that group up and we're also going to hide the chair that she's in and then we're going to create a new camera from roughly where I want to be so I'll say here we're going to apply active viewport transforms and then we're going to go into our new camera now what we need to do now is we're just going to straighten everything up so we're going to reduce our rotation on all axes to zero and then as you can see we're about 90 centimeters off the floor so I'm just going to round that up to exactly 90 like so and what we then need to do is we need to go into our lens settings and we're going to change the lens distortion type to spherical so we're now going to come into our render settings and we're going to change our general size we're going to change this to 16 by 8 or 2 by 1 whichever you want to do and we're going to change our resolution to about 8000 like so that gives us the dimensions that we're after now some of you may have already figured out what I'm about to do but for those of you who don't know essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this scene into an HDRI that will allow us to remove all of the stuff we don't want and just focus on the camera and the character and the chair that she's sitting on and we can actually set the environment to the HDRI that we're about to create so if we quickly jump into Nvidia iRay mode it's going to take just a moment to start rendering and what you're going to see is in texture shaded mode you just see that but now if you look because of the spherical distortion what we've actually got is a perfectly good HDRI map. So what we need to do is we need to change our tone mapping. So this is our default setting. So we're going to render one image like this and we're going to save it to our hard drive. Then we're going to render a second image where we're going to change our exposure. So we're going to go down two stops. What that means is we need to go to f22 no i'll tell you what we're going to do we're going to do it by shutter speed because that's easier for everybody to work out so let's say this is 125 so we'll go to 250 then to 500 so our second exposure is going to be on 500 and then our third and final image is going to be on so 125 half of that 60 half of that against 30 roughly speaking it doesn't have to be exactly accurate so we're going to do a third image like this 
So just to recap what we're going to do, we're going to go for 128 shutter speed, render one of these images, save it to your hard drive. Then you're going to change to 500. You're going to render this image. You're going to save it to your hard drive. Then we're going to change to 30, render this image, save it to your hard drive. That's all we need to do in Dash Studio for this first step. We're going to move on into Adobe Photoshop. Once you're in Adobe Photoshop, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into File, Automate, Merged HDR Pro. The next dialog that will pop up, make sure that it says Use Files and click on Browse. Then we're going to select the th three images that we've just created and we're going to hit OK. And then we're going to hit OK again. And the computer is going to do a little bit of thinking. It's going to load up all three images as layers, do a bit of magic, and then it will give us a few more options like so. So what we've got here is we've got our three images. We've got a dark one, a middle one, and a bright one. So we need to remember that our dark one was at one five hundredth of a second shutter speed, but it was also at f8. So make sure you change that as well. ISO is 100 by default, leave that as it is. Click on this little right arrow to go to the next one. So we know that this was 128, so 125 there. And hit F8 there. And then in the next image, we're going to change this because we know that this was 1 30th of a second and this was F8 also. And we're going to hit OK. And it's going to come up with this image. Don't worry too much about it. I'm going to briefly explain what these values mean though. So EV is short for exposure value. EV plus two means it's two stops of light brighter and EV minus two means it's two stops darker. What a stop of light is essentially one stop is half or double. So EV zero, if that had been EV minus one, that would be half as much light because it's EV minus two, it's half as much and then half as much again. And then going in the other way, EV plus one would be twice the amount of light. EV plus two is twice the amount and then twice the amount again. And that's really all there is to it. So we're gonna make sure that we're in mode 32 bit and we're gonna hit okay. Give it a moment to do a bit of thinking. It's creating our HDRI for us like so going to do a little bit more thinking and there we go so now we just need to go to file save as we're going to change the format to radiance and as you can see i've already created one here in testing but i'm just going to overlap that one test.hdr call it whatever you want make sure it says .hdr at the end so that you know you're in the right format hit save yes i do and your next step is simply to close down Photoshop and go back into Das Studio. So I'll see you there. So our next step, and really our final step, is to make some changes to the scene. Now I've already done that in this. I've deleted everything apart from the character and her chair. So I'm now going to bring those back like so. And I'm going to hop back into camera 12, camera 11, let's see which one. So there you go, this is a slightly different pose because I have been playing around a little bit, but this is essentially it. So what we need to do now is we need to go into the environment page of our render settings. And as you can see, I've already selected it, but if you want to do the same, you just click on it and you go to browse and then it'll come up with your selection and you'll just choose your HDR and select it and then give it a moment to have a think. Now I'm going to quickly hop into iRay mode. It shouldn't take too long to start rendering on the screen in the preview. And as you can see, it looks pretty good. You know, she's got the lighting, the same lighting, the same exact lighting that she would have on her if we were still rendering within the scene if she were in the room and we can rotate the camera around and you can see that because we've got the depth of field effect on certain angles is not going to look right but generally speaking it is not going to look too bad from most of the angles that you shoot from provided that you're just shooting them and the 
uh, the props that they're touching and this makes a dramatic increase in speed in your rendering times so I hope you found that tip useful good luck with it let me know how you get on if you did find this video useful or any of the other videos that I've created by all means give me a thumbs up uh, subscribe hit the notification icon if you want to stay up to date and I'll see you all in the next video thanks very much bye bye